These are the biggest, the baddest compact tractors on the market today. <laughs> if you plan on storing your tractor indoors, pay close attention because it's going to be a tight fit depending if you have a cab or an open station. That'll lift your mother-in-law after Thanksgiving. Woo! Guys, how are we doing? Welcome to Goodworks Tractors. This comparison here is one that uh, I have a lot invested in myself, not just in preparation for this video, but in trying to decide if I wanted a 4066R or an L6060. This one here is gonna be a really tough choice, and I mean that in a good way. Let's get into that now. So what we have here is a John Deere 4066R. It happens to be my own personal machine, and over here is a Kubota L6060. These tractors are at the top end, the biggest you can get in the compact tractor class. 66 horsepower, 62 horsepower. They're just the creme de la creme, loaded to the max, loaded to the gills. You can get either one in an open station or a cab, but this is gonna be a tough decision for folks. To some extent, this will apply to the 4052 and the 4044R variants on the John Deere, and then over here on the L6060. It's not quite as streamlined, but you're gonna see variants like the, uh, the L5060, the L4060, a couple others also that'll have maybe slightly different options or slightly different capacities or uh, dimensional configurations, but they're gonna be pretty close. So keep that in mind. We're looking at the L6060 and the 4066. If you like what you see here, consider giving me a thumbs up. And also, I've done a lot of comparisons between John Deere and Kubota, different frame sizes, different models. Check out those other videos there and those other comparisons to help find the right tractor for you. I know how difficult that can be. And if you want more great content, hit that subscribe button right underneath the video. I say it all the time and I bet a lot of you guys don't know where to find it, but seriously, there's a lot of links right down there in the description area of the video, just right underneath, okay? So check that out. Direct links to a lot of different manufacturers, places you can get 5% off with code GWT, or head on over to goodworkstractors.com. Enough jabbering, let's get to that comparison. Let's talk about loaders, all right? So these are gonna be non-self-leveling or NSL, okay? Uh, you can get a self-leveling loader on the John Deere. I've seen self-leveling options listed or discussed over here on the L6060, but I tried to find some information online. I couldn't find anything. If you've got a self-leveling loader for the L series, it'd be great to put some information down below about that. If we talk about max lift height right at the pivot point, so where that carrier, whether it's the John Deere quick attach or the Skidster quick attach, where those are gonna pivot at that pivot point, you got 110 inches to max height over here, 112 on the Kubota. Talking about lift capacities, how much these bad boys can lift up. On the Kubota, you're gonna lift about 2,350 pounds 2550 on this John Deere loader, so about 200 pounds more on the John Deere versus the Kubota, although you can potentially get a couple inches higher on the Kubota. But that's on the front end. We'll have to wait and see on the back end if the John Deere is stronger than the Kubota. Stick around to find out. I found it interesting as well, and I thought you guys might also where the lines are routed. So, of course, you're gonna have some exposed areas kind of up here in the business end of things, but as they start to route uh, along the loader arm, you're gonna see they're tucked nicely right under, underneath the steel on the underside. And same thing over on the John Deere, but that's not something that can be said on all the smaller models. It's just a nice thing to see because those loader lines are easily damaged. And also, both of these machines are equipped with a, a grapple ready or a third function or a diverter. You'll hear it called a lot of things. These are uh, third functions that are found on these tractors here. But you see an outlet that's mounted up here. Same thing, there's some outlets that are right here on the front end of the John Deere. Those are both allowing you to connect a grapple to it or a hydraulic plow blade, something along those lines to have an additional hydraulic function way up in front. Keep in mind, these are options, not standard equipment. The last thing I want to mention is these are both going to be quick park or quick attach loaders. I will say, and maybe it's just my experience, the John Deere is probably a little bit easier to take off. However, watch the videos. These Kubotas are not too difficult to take off either. I'd like to take just a minute and talk about the hind ends on these tractors here. I mean, it's about as pretty as you can get, don't you think? But you got a lot going on here, including some standard features, also some optional features on both of them. It shows how they could be set up, but not necessarily how they will be set up if you're looking at something on the used market or even new. Now keep in mind, these are used, so they're gonna show a little bit of wear on them here and there, but you're gonna see a top and tilt uh, kit here. That's the additional hydraulics that are on the three-point hitch, and of course you need additional hydraulics and on your tractor to be able to operate it, but they are gonna be a category one three-point hitch. You'll see they do have an adjustable uh, telescoping draft link right here, so you can easily adjust these in and out. You'll see draw bars are also going to be standard equipment along with a 540 RPM rear PTO. You'll see here on the Kubota, you have these additional 
adjustments here on the end of the three-point hitch. I've seen these on some of the John Deere, so I don't know if that's a standard feature. It could be optional. I'm not really sure, but the idea behind it is it's going to make it a little bit easier if you're trying to hook up to a three-point attachment. As you can see over here on the John Deere, you're going to have a similar setup, including some options, not standard stuff. So you have additional hydraulics on there, the top and tilt kit. You have these adjustable uh, sway arms down there on either end. You are going to see the optional Spico quick hitch. I don't own a tractor that doesn't have one of these on there. They are a very popular um, add-on accessory, especially as you get to larger tractors like this with really heavy, cumbersome three-point attachments. Having a three-point quick hitch like this takes a lot of that pain and anger and frustration out of the hookup process or even the removal process as well. The reason I love the Spico in particular on top of just loving quick hitches is that there are no bushings required so you save yourself a boatload of money in the long run. I know a lot of you guys ask about these two controls that you see right here. It's called the hitch assist. It's something that's found on the four series of tractors. Can make it a very convenient option to try to actually move the tractor physically forward or backwards from where I'm standing right in this position very slowly and also raise and lower that three point hitch. So let me tell you what the lift height is all the way to the center of uh, the ball here on the lower arm as well as how much you can lift. So your lift height to the center of the ball is gonna be 29 and a half inches. So to get an apples to apples comparison, we're gonna use the 24 inches out uh, weight lift capacity that these things have. 24 inches out, you're gonna be able to lift 2,500 pounds on the John Deere 4R series. Let's take a look really quick here at the Kubota as well, get you a little measurement on there eh, about 27 and a half so i guess a couple inches lower than the john deere however it's going to lift a very impressive 3,000 pounds if we're talking about that same 24 inch uh from the end of the ball dimension way out here 3,000 pounds on your three-point hitch that'll lift your mother-in-law after thanksgiving Woo! you are not going to feel like you're lacking for power on either one of these machines the Kubota over here is powered by a Kubota four-cylinder turbocharged diesel engine, liquid-cooled, of course, about 149 cubic inches, 62 horsepower. Now, the 4066 and all of the current 4 Series tractors are powered by four-cylinder Yanmar diesel. Again, this version here is going to be turbocharged, also liquid-cooled. It's going to be about 128 cubic inches, driving 66 horsepower. So if you take a look at the hood design, you'll see on the Kubota, it is a one-piece design for the most part. So just one lever there, pull everything up. You have really nice access to the battery and everything else underneath. Over on the John Deere, you are going to have quick access with the hood. And then you do have side panels that come off with just the pull and twist of a little pin. There's no tools required. If we're talking about the Kubota L60 specifically, not the other variants that are available in the Kubota Grand L series. This is only in a hydrostatic transmission. However, it's a very advanced hydro transmission. You're gonna have three ranges, high, medium, and low, and you're gonna have two speed variants within each range, a high and a low, or you can see the turtle in the hair. Select your range down here, and then if you wanna go in high or low up here. So basically you have six speeds total, double what most hydro transmissions have. Not only that, but you can also change these micro adjustments on the fly. Now you're going to have to pay close attention because if you look at another variant of the L series, the Grand L, like the 5060 or the 4060 or a couple of the others that are mixed in, you will have other transmission options available. Uh, a sync shuttle, okay, which is similar to a, almost a standard gear drive, and then also a glide shift, which allows you to, at least my interpretation of Kubota's glide shift, uh, shift actual gears without having to clutch. I always like to point out how the pedal is different on the 6060 versus the other variants in the Kubota lineup where they have more of a treadle pedal design. This really isn't like that at all. It's kind of like a side-by-side -side pedal with your go forward on the out and you go backwards on the end. You can choose to put your foot up here and rock it forwards and backwards if you want to, but it's totally different than the traditional treadle that runs really long right in here. Over here on the John Deere, you're gonna see a hydro transmission. Again, it's a fairly advanced system. I forgot to mention it on the Kubota, but both of these systems have basically an auto throttle feature that you can enable or disable if you don't want it. But basically, if you enable it, the harder you press on the go forward or go backwards pedal, it's gonna allow the engine RPMs to rev up as well. So that is something available on both of these. Now on all of the 4R series and the 4M series tractors, you're gonna have a power reverser option as well a little bit more like a gear drive. I've done videos com comparing the different transmissions as well. So if you wanna get a more detailed or in-depth look at that, check out that video. But basically, you're gonna have gears, you're gonna have a range selector, you're gonna have a handle that's on the steering column to allow you to select going forward or reverse. Oh, and the last thing before...
you get this all the way up, and you can go. Don't forget to do that. A quick correction I want to make from past videos I've done. The Kubota L6060 or the L series in general, the Grand L series, you can get an optional mid PTO not to run a belly mower on the L6060 as far as I can tell, just to run a front mount attachment like a snowblower or a rotary broom. That option is not available on the John Deere 4 series, although if you go to the earlier generations like the 4720, 4520, that series there from a while back, you did have the mid PTO option available for both a mid mower or a front snowblower. Now being very high end tractors, these are both going to be available in an open station variant or a cab variant. These are what I really consider to be true factory cabs. I know there's a little bit of variation perhaps in what that in interpretation means, but when I think of a factory cab as something that is uh, from the factory, integrated with the structure and design of it, and also includes air conditioning and heat, there's just no comparing an aftermarket cab or even a a factory installed aftermarket, kind of like the Mauser cab on the smaller John Deere's versus what a true factory cab is. The one here from John Deere or the one offered by Kubota, there's a lot of details and information online, but they are very, they're just very well constructed, put together, very quiet, comfortable. You'll hear some guys that say they feel like they're they're cheap or they're noisy or they're they're clunky. I've sat in these over and over and over. I've sat in other machines as well. I love them. I, I don't. I don't see what these problems are all about. For you guys that have larger frames, I'm six foot three, about 200 pounds. You finally start to feel comfortable. I know a lot of those smaller tractors, you feel cramped, squished. You have more legroom here, okay? And even if you go to Kubota's uh, website and look at their information, their pamphlet about the L6060 in particular, it'll tell you they've moved that seat back a little bit just to give you more legroom, just make it feel more spacious. Same thing can be said over here for the John Deere 4066. Along with air conditioning and heat, these cabs are gonna offer features such as a front wiper, a rear wiper, a radio, work lights on the front and the back as well. You can outfit them in a lot of different ways. Let's go over a few critical dimensions, wheelbase, width, height, that kind of thing real quick. Don't wanna spend a lot of time on it, but just give you some numbers. Wheelbase, okay, center to center on both axles here, 73 inches on the John Deere. Over here on the Kubota, 75 inches. So a couple inches longer on the Kubota, John Deere, a little bit shorter. Let's give you the width really quick on the outside to outside of the rear tires. Keep in mind, there's gonna be some variation both depending on what tires you're running and the rims, as well as if you have them positioned in a narrow or a wide setting, that kind of thing. Just a measurement, a data point for you, 72 inches outside to outside on the John Deere. If we take that same measurement over here on this Kubota, you're gonna have about 68 inches outside to outside. Now you'll notice, eight-way wheels that are on the Kubota here, meaning you have a potential to have eight different widths, okay? From narrow to wider out, you're gonna have a lot more variation and flexibility here to really make it more stable side to side, but the standard setup is gonna be about 68 inches, which is what it says online. We can grab a seat height as well to kind of give us that feeling that we'll have on the operator station. If we grab a dimension here on the L6060, we're just gonna do the, uh, the eyeball here, about 50 inches from the ground to that seat pad. If we do that same thing over here on the John Deere, that's going to be about 54 inches. Now keep in mind, you know, if I have the seats, these are both air ride seats. If the uh, amount of air that's in there, the cushion is maybe a little bit different, then this could definitely sink down a little bit more once I'm sitting on it. So that's just a point of reference, but five inch difference there just to note. Now pay attention if you plan on storing your tractor inside a garage. If you're gonna have a cab, one of these guys here, whether it's the John Deere or the Kubota, you're gonna need an eight foot nominal door. So overall height here is about 97 inches, maybe 96 and a half. I've loaded my tires with liquid ballast, taken a little bit of air pressure out, and they'll fit in my nominal eight foot doors just by a scotch. So the Kubota is about 93 inches from the information I found online, so that should fit pretty easily underneath an eight foot door. If you're gonna go with an open station tractor, if you have a canopy like this, it's not gonna fit underneath the eight foot door. However, if you don't have a canopy, you can fold down the ROPS bar and actually fit underneath a seven foot high door. Something to keep in mind. Now, there's a lot of, 
a lot of high-tech features that are found on here. These are deluxe tractors. You're going to see things called stall guard, motion match, load match, HDS. These are just fancy settings, you know, some to make adjustments, the engine, uh, whether it's the speed that you're going or uh, raising the RPMs to get the PTO going so it doesn't stall out. If you're going up a hill with a load, all sorts of settings there to be able to be fine-tuned and just tailored to the application that you're doing. You're going to have a lot of standard features as well, such as tilt steering, cruise control, a suspension seat, you know, you can get the upgraded air ride seat if you want to, you know, headlights, ROPS lights, you can add on work lights if you want. But really these operator stations are very comfortable, okay? Armrest seats, very nice cushions, good platforms, rubber floor mats, everything about being comfortable for long periods of time while you're in the field. Now this tractor here has a lot of additional remotes. So this is an option, these are options. What you see on the backside here and this little button are options for additional hydraulic functions, but that little guy right there, that's standard. So you push that in, say the tractor's on, it's like a throttle boost, an RPM boost. So if you're doing some loader work and say you only have the, the engine RPMs part way up, but you wanna raise that loader really quick or maybe dump it really quick, you can push that button and it's gonna increase or rev up the engine so you can have a faster response. But the point being, once you get to tractors like this or the John Deere over there, you're gonna have just a boatload of features on here. And to be honest, there's gonna be some you're probably not even gonna use. And it just struck me as we were talking right now, but I noticed the fuel fill location right here, which I wanted to make sure I pointed out. You're going to see it's a pretty nice, convenient location down closer to the, to the ground, so you don't have to worry about raising a gas can or anything else up really high. Let's go take a look at the John Deere location really quick. You will see the fuel fill on the John Deere is going to be located on the fender, so this isn't the most inconvenient location. And for me, when I'm uh, using the external tank for my truck and just filling it up, it's a piece of cake, but still probably not as convenient if it was down a little bit lower. And a real quick note on backhoes, because I know some of you ask, I just want to point out that if you do a dimension, a, a two foot flat bottom digging depth, you're going to have 102 inches on the John Deere versus 110 inches over on the Kubota. That's going to just about sum it up there, folks. I want to remind you again, this is my 4066R right here. I actually had one for a long time. I sold it. I regretted it and I bought it again. I will say though, I looked long and hard at the L6060 in the cab station. I really... I wouldn't mind if I had one of these. I, I absolutely love them. I think they're amazing. There's some features on here that I wish the John Deere had and vice versa. I really love that micro adjustment within the hydro transmission as well. So if you want to get more in depth on either one of these machines here, I've done other videos on the 4066R, done videos on the L6060 as well. And also check out all the hydraulic options. It'll give you some ideas even if you don't end up getting a tractor new or maybe you have one already and you want to see how to outfit it and configure it. If you like what you see here, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and also hit that subscribe button and don't forget to read through that description right down there underneath the video a lot of helpful links down there for cool products for tractor owners or head on over to goodworkstractors.com thanks so much for taking the time to stop by until next time stay safe we'll see you soon